Shalom Aleichem, good morning. Welcome and welcome to our viewers on the tour anytime. We want to dedicate this year with Hatzlacha of Ben Zion Ben Dosa, him and his family. We should have a month full of real simcha. A simcha of the Geula Shalema. We're not necessarily going according to the order of the Pasha. We're going to have some uh, Pasha, some Inyana de Yoima, some Inyanim of Tfila. commands Moshe, you, Moshe, you, will command Klal Yisrael and they should bring to you Ve'yikhu Elecha Shemen Zayit. Why does it have to be Moshe Rabbeinu that commands Klal Yisrael, bring me some olive oil? Why Dafka Moshe Rabbeinu? Can it be something else? Someone else? Says the Shah Basabi. In Ehuvin Undalet Amudalef we learn that if it wasn't for the smashing of the luchos, there wouldn't be any forgetfulness in Klal Yisrael. You would learn and you would remember forever what you learn. Imagine, it's unbelievable. So who's responsible for forgetfulness in Klal Yisrael? If we can say such a thing, Moshe Ben. But in Holy Yes, you give me base, we learn that one of the gulos for memory is olive oil. So therefore, as if HaKadosh Baruch Hu says to Moshe, you cause Klal Yisrael to forget. Won't you think you need a rectification for that? The rectification is olive oil. So you bring olive oil, and that strengthens one's memory, and that will correspond to the fact that now we forget as a result of you smashing the luchos. Is there a connection between, remember the dove, Yoina from Noyach Sark? Any connection to Pasha Tetzavi? Is she coming here, flying again, visiting us? The Yonah, the dove, from Tevas Noach and Parshas Tetzaveh. Any connection? What about them? <coughs> A little more than that. What Rashi says is, the what? Trying to show that it's better to get your Parnassah, you know. That's back in Parshas Noach. But I want to go with a positive spin, not a negative one. The answer is in Medrash Tanchuma, and the Pasuk Einaich Yoinim, Pasuk and Shira Shinim, Shira Shirim, your eyes are like doves. Klal Yisrael resembles a, <coughs> a Yoinam, a dove. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Why so when. Like what's that? Why are our eyes like a dove? We are compared, because Shbohu calls us a Yoinam, a dove. Why? Because we are loyal to our mate, like a Yonah is loyal to a mate, we are loyal to a Kodesh Baruch So when Noach was in the Teva, he sent the raven back and forth, back and forth, and it never really worked out. Only when he sent the dove, and the dove came back, therefore, as a result of the Yonah, Noach and people in his, uh, his family members, they came out of the Teva. So Kodesh Baruch Hu said at that point, this is the Medesh Nechuma, just like the Yona brought light to the world. In other words, now they break free. Finally, they're able to see the light. They're out of the Teva. They were prisoners for a whole year. So to you, says the Kodesh Baruch to Klal Yisrael, you are compared to a Yona. Bring olive oil and light the kettle. Create light. The Yona apparently is responsible for light. It did it once upon a time in Pasha Snoyach. Therefore, since we are compared to a Yoyna, we are supposed to light the Menorah and bring light to the world. It fits very well with the fact that we are supposed to be a light unto the nations. Avnei Achoshen, the breastplate stones. How many letters are on them? The names of all the Shvatim. One dozen? Twelve? How do you fit all the names? Reuven, Shimon, Levi, and already past 12. Reuven is 5, Shimon is 5, Levi is 13. All the Shvatim. Rabbeinu Bechaya, he says, there are 72 letters on the Choshen, on the Avnei Choshen. Why 72? Because they correspond to the 72 letter name that the Kodesh Buch has. Shmo Godol is a great name that has 72 letters. Why? Says Rabbeinu Bechaye, to show that the world was created in 72 hours. How 72 hours? It was six days. But the world was only created during the day, not at night. 
daytime has 12 hours, nighttime has 12 hours. The day was only created during the day, as the Pasuk says, Beyoim asos hasher melokim eretz veshemayim, Beyom enad balayla. So six days times 12 hours each day, that's 72 hours of creation. And that's what the Pasuk in Tehillim Pei Tes Pasuk Gimel says, Ki amarti, oilam chesed yibane. What's chesed gimatria? 72. HaKadosh Baruch Hu created the world in 72 hours of chesed in the tw six days of creation. It's a world built in chesed. It says Rabbi Dabichai, we learn from here that the world which is created in 72 hours is sustained for the merit of the 12 tribes that have 72 letters. Rabbi said we move into Asha'el Avinyana de Yoima a little. Maybe you'll see later why we connected to Pasha Tzaveh. Chet, Samech, Dalet, 72 Gimatia. Samech is 60, Chet and Dalet is 12, 72. Chet, Samech, Dalet. Chesed, Chesed, 72. I don't know if you remember, many, many years ago, <clears throat> about three years ago, there was the fourth election within two years. Remember this? History. And Mistama, since all of you are immersed in Torah 24-7, I have to bring you up to date on Tan Paltex, Even though in this Makom Kodosh, we do not like to speak about politics. We don't want to speak about politics anywhere. It's a waste of time. But, we have to learn some Torah. So just to bring us up to what happened back then, there was a constant tie for four straight elections within two years. And at one point, some members, and again, we're not interested in politics. It doesn't make a difference to us, right or left. But some people on the right side of the political map decided to go with the left and create a new government. In essence, they betrayed the voters that uh, voted for them from that side of the political map. And again, it doesn't make a difference to us if it's right or left. We just need to know the concepts here. After they decided to form this coalition and have this government, there was about two weeks until they're going to be sworn in. During those two weeks, can you imagine the pressure that they were in from the right side of the political map, the voters that voted for them, and they're seeing that they're just leaving them, taking their votes and going with as if they're enemies. Threats demonstrations, all kinds of sanctions, you name it. Unbelievable pressure. At one point, a school principal called me and he said, two kids of one of these seven Knesset members that decided to defect goes to my school. Am I entitled, as one of the ways of putting pressure on the parents, Tomorrow morning, when the kids come to learn Torah, to say to them, sorry, close the gate, turn around, go home. Well, your father changes his mind. Oh, we'll let you come back in again and learn some Gemara with us, and Torah, and Chumash, and Navi, and Mishnah, whatever you want. Even math and chemistry. But until then, psh, get out of here. Am I entitled to do so as part of putting pressure on them? All Gidoli Yisrael were against this move. They held that this is endangering Klal Yisrael, endangering religion in Klal Yisrael and the whole, well, us being here. So, we're allowed to put a lot of pressure on them. Is this one way of, is this a form of positive pressure that one will be allowed to put in order to make sure that they do what they need to do? What do you say? No. No, no absolutely not. For nothing. Why should you have a raya? In the base team, we need some kind of documentation here. Sorry. We should not use Torah as a tool or as a as a. Al tase toya kardum lachporba. But that's when you have a lot of toya. Don't use that to make money, to try and gain more fame and fortune and publicity and honor and kavod and gaiva. But who says we can't use it as a pressure on someone to do the right thing in the eyes of Hashem? Yeah, but this, like, can a teacher go on strike? Is it the same idea? 
This teacher, teacher is going to strike in order to get more money because he feels he should get more money for what he does. Here we're putting pressure to stop something that will destroy Kali soil. Kind of different. Not sure it's the same. The teacher is taking care of his own pocket. Here we're taking care of Kali soil. Let's say, let's assume, all Gedoli Israel are unanimous. That this is wrong. Let's assume. And they say, not allowed to do this. And these people are not listening. Some of them are from people. Can we say, we're going to do something very, very extreme to make sure that you listen to the opinion of Gedoli Israel? Each one dies according to his own sin. What are you going to do with the Pasuk Poiked Avos Avos Avon Avos Albanim? Rashi? Sheochzim Mimasei Avos. But here I'm not telling the kids you did anything wrong. I'm just putting some pressure, hopefully. How long do you think these Knesset members, a parent will be able to continue whatever he's doing when the kids are sitting at home and we're not allowing them to come back to school? No, not learning Torah, not being allowed to school. For a day, for a week, until the parent changes his mind? But that's the punishment of the kid. Isn't it? So you're saying, no, not a child. You have a raya? That possibly, the children will not suffer the sins of the parents. Let's not suffer. We don't punish the kid, we don't kill them for the sin of the parents. But depriving them from the chance of learning Torah, is that punishment? Where? Where does it say then? Where? Shabbos? Kufitas? No one likes this, right? Anyone? My boy said, anyone has any tzad to say that? Gonna be shayach? Pashut, no, right? Bitul Akima sometimes nullifying the Torah is upholding the Torah. We're doing it for the sake of Torah, to save Kali soil. So you're saying we're punishing the kids, we're not punishing them? We're allowing them to continue to flourish in a normal, healthy, religious society. We have cases, of, let's say they are, they are accusing uh, a Jew of doing something, and uh, they want to do the pogrom unless the one of them comes. We cannot denounce the one who did, right? So how can we punish one person to save the class? This is punishing one Jew to save the class, right? This is quite different. That's a dine nefashos, pikuach nefesh. You're sending us to a mission in Maseches Tumos, Paskin la Aloha in Shuchanoch Yovedea, Simen Kufnun Zain. If the goyim come and they say, give us one, and we will kill him. If they didn't specify a specific person and he's not Chayav Misa, we're not allowed to do this. And let everyone die. And we're not going to single out, take one person and say, here, here he is. Dine nefashos. Here, we're closing the gate. If he wants to learn Torah, he can go back home and learn Torah by himself. It's not dinner in the fashos. But no one likes this, right? So this principle is on the phone. And I told him, look, there's a few gemores against you. Shabbos, kuf, yutes, amud, beis. Because I'll say, why was Yerushalayim destroyed? Lo charva Yerushalayim, ela, only because because they didn't let the kids learn Torah. The same page the Gemara continues and says, Why does this world exist for the Torah learning of little kids? <coughs> As an aside, I don't know if I mentioned this in the, <coughs> in the past, but even if I did, it's a tremendous vote from Rabbi Yosef Chaim Zornfeld. Right after the Gemara says this, that the world continues to revolve, that, that uh, stable, we stable the way we're familiar with it because of the Torah learning of little kids. Omale Rav Papa Ale Abaye. Rav Papa and Abaye, the greatest samurai. And Rav Papa says to Abaye, wait a second, what about the Torah of you and me? We are the greatest samurai. Our Torah is not good enough to keep this world turning the way we're familiar with it. And Abaye says, we are great. But, We are great. But Shlomo Melech wrote a pasuk. In Adam Tzadik Baaretz, Asher Yaaseh Tov, Velo Yecheta, even the greatest person sins. But kids under 13 are pure. They are sinless. And Torah that comes out of a mouth. 
of a person who never sinned in his life, like these 13 years old, under, thir under 13, is not the same. Like Torah that comes out of a person who did. Maybe once we were late to shul for one minute. You know, and Rabbi, I don't know what their sins were. But it's still not, not, you know, it's not the same thing. Fine. Says the Beis of Chaim Zonfeld. A papa and a baye. How far are we from them? Light years away. The greatest summer wine. But guess what? The kids from the time of Rapapa and Abaye are the same like our kids today. If they are under 13, they are pure, they are sinless. There is no difference between them and it is for their toya that the world continues to exist the way we know it. And this should propel us to action, to encourage our kids, to push them, to learn, to learn, to learn. It's because of their toya, not ours, that the world continues to exist. On the same page, the Gemara continues and says, You don't stop kids from learning Torah, even Afilu Lebin and Beis Amigdash. Imagine, you know, sometimes there's the, the, the scar that passes by, the Leviah of this is going to be, instead of that. Binyan Beis Amigdash, everybody's requested in Yerushalayim, come and help. We all run to Yerushalayim, right? The kids continue to learn in the Chedah. We don't stop them. So you want to stop, you want to close the gate on this kid and say, no, you can't learn to you. What are you thinking? Psachim. Kuf Yud Gimel Amud Beis. The Gemara has a concept. Tuvia Chata. Vizigud Mingad. Uven sinned. And you want to punish Shimon? His father is doing something wrong. So you want to punish his kid for what his father is doing? What are you thinking? And after I gave him all that, I told him, where are you coming from? I told him, but let me say, you can. He says, say what? I said, listen, I wanted to tell you the achrayus, tremendous responsibility that you have as a mechanic, as an educator, as a teacher, as a principal of this place, you should know, who do you have in your hands? These kids, shh, the world exists for them. But let me say, to answer your specific question, the answer is yes. He says to me, what do you mean? One who doesn't listen to a base din. We put him in Nidui. What if he still doesn't listen? And again, this Shaila is not Lemaise. We're talking in Lomdis because it's against the law. And because we need a unanimous decision of all Gedoy Israel. If it was that we were to have this type of a decision, and we can do whatever Allah dictates and not necessarily what the law dictates, so then we can apply this. Shuhanoch, Yoredea, Shin Lamedalet, Seivav. I'm reading to you, Shuhanoch, put your seat belts on. You don't put your seat belt on. This is, I'm telling you, it's explosive. Imratsu Lemaet. The base didn't want to minimize, to shorten the nidu. Normal nidu is 30 days. But they want to give him only 20 days. Or, they want to add to the 30 days. They're allowed to. Now starts the frightening part. The Rema comes and he adds. Ve'yesh reshus le'beis din le'achmir alav. Beis din has reshus, has permission. To be machmir on this person who doesn't listen to the base thing. What are they going to be machmir with? This parent, parent who doesn't listen to the base thing. I don't know, baby boy. He comes to the moyel the night before and he says, Moyel, tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, yeah? Moyel says, No. Base thing told me I can't mal you. What do you mean you can't? Mitzvah's essay from the Torah, positive commandment, thou shalt mal his son on the eighth day. He says, yeah, but we're not going to until you change your mind. So <laughs> what do you mean? When are you going to circumcise my son? I don't know. Two years, 20 years, 50 years, whenever you decide to change. You're a chumba? Doesn't stop there. Let his body rot and stink in his house. And to expel his kids from the school. And to kick his wife out, me basic knesset. His rebbe comes at six o'clock. She wants to daven nets with us. His rebbe tzin, turn around, go back. You want to daven? Daven no. Just what's the connection? What's my? 
I'm not even happy with what my husband is doing. He says, okay, so go home and tell him. Until he changes his mind, you can't enter this shul. Can you imagine? Until when? Ad kabel alav esadim. Until he changes his mind and starts listening to the basin. What's the reason? Says the Chsam Soifer. When one's kids go to school and they learn Torah, he has such a big schus. And we want to nullify this schus from this person because having this schus will give him more courage to stand and fight. The opinion of whoever he's fighting for and he's not listening to the base din. We don't want, this is the language of the Chassam Sofer, we don't want this Rasha to have any zchus that assists him. However, and you're saying we're punishing the kids, we're not punishing the kids. Says Chassam Sofer, don't worry about the kids. Don't worry about his wife. Because we have a rule. A person who wanted to do a mitzvah and he was forced not to do it. Chishev la'asos mitzvah venenas velo asa'ah it is counted as if he did it. It is counted as if his kids are in school. It's counted as if his rebbetzin is the first one of the ten people in shul. Five o'clock in the morning, she comes to say tehillim before the nets. Don't worry. They are not losing anything, but he is losing. He, the rebels against Beis Din, he loses his reward. And other rabbi says, Who's responsible for this? Let him not come to us and say, what? You don't want to circumcise my son? You don't want my kids to learn Torah? It's not that we don't want to learn, you teach your kids Torah. You don't want your kids to learn Torah. Because if you do, make sure that you listen to that Torah that says that you have to listen to Beisdin. So we're not doing anything. You're doing it. It's called Ihu de Azik Anafshei. You are harming yourself. We're not doing anything to you. Change your ways. And we'll be the first ones. To take your kids back to school, take your rabbits back to the shul, to circumcise your kids. So we say, okay, uh, listen, this is a tremendous, tremendous <coughs> koyach. Who is given this unbelievable koyach? Lichoyer, which is Sanhedrin, the great Sanhedrin Yerushalayim, right? 71 Dayanim. You'll be surprised. Shulchan Ocho Shin Mishpat, Simen Beis, Hilchos Dayanim, Seif Aleph. I'm reading to you Shulchan Ocho. Listen to a language. Kol beis din afilu einam smuchim be'eretz Yisroel. Any beis din. Even if they didn't get smicha, smicha is only given in Eretz Yisroel. One from the other until back all the way to Moshe Rabbeinu. But even if they didn't get smicha, we're talking about a small little town somewhere, I don't know where in South Africa, America, England, France, I don't know where. Three guys, not smuchim be'eretz Yisroel. However, if they see that there is a very big problem with specific Averos, it's the need of the time, of the place that they are in. What can they do? They can execute. This is not Hilchisa Le Meshicha. This is not Halachos for. Time of Mashiach. This is time for now. Shulchan Oruch is not writing halachos for the time of Mashiach. He's writing for us today. Ben kol dinei oynesh. Any type of punishment. Ve'afilu ein badavar eidus gimura. Even if you don't have real good qualified two kosher witnesses. Ve'imu ile alim. And if the guy is violent, we can have goyim hit him. They have the koyach to take all his assets and say, well, this is now Hefker, you just lost all your belongings. If they see there's a break in the fence, they can do whatever they need to seal it. However, make sure that whatever they do in the Shem I think it's a great idea. However, oh, we have a problem. Only God on the door. Or, to ve'ha'ir shehimchum beis din alayim. Or, the seven, to ve'ha'ir, that the beis din appointed to be people who are running, the, running town. And the Ramah says, v'chein no'egin, and that's the minag, b'chol makom, she to ve'ha'ir in their city is ke beis din agodol. To ve'ha'ir, seven people were appointed. There's elections next week, Tuesday, right? 
They are in their place like based in Agadol. Makin, the Oinshin, they can hit and they can punish, and the Hefker and Hefker, and whatever they make Hefker is Hefker, Kefi Haminag. Not to be believed. Another source to the unbelievable Koyach that the based in has, the Rema says in Choshen Mishpat, Simen Tetvav, Seifei, if the base din thinks, im nire le base din, nire, it's a very powerful word, nire, they think, she'echad goizer mechavero, this guy keeps stealing from his friend, and they cannot take out money from him using the regular form of a base din, they can decree on everybody else here in town not to do business with him. And if it's a woman, the tzchuspenek, who steals from others, they can decree that she's not allowed to marry anyone and nobody should be involved in her shiduchim until she takes out from her pocket what belongs to other people and gives it back. Meredith, what do you care if she gets married? So the Urim Vitumim explains if she gets married, it's going to be even harder to take out money from her pocket. See the unbelievable question, the answer based in? And therefore, in our case, Lichoya, again, La Halacha, not Lemaise, if all G'dayle Adol are unanimous that this is the right thing to do. In other words, that they're not allowed to go with the other side of the political map. They're doing a terrible, terrible avla. Lechoya, we should be able to tell the principal, you can close the gates to the school. Don't allow the kids to come and learn. And if the guy says, what are you doing to me? We're going to say, we're not doing to you anything. You are doing to yourself. Ihu de azik anafshe, you are hurting yourself, you are hurting your family. As soon as you change, and listen to Gedari Yisrael, will open up the gates of the school and will allow, with Kavod Gadol, your kids to come back and learn Torah. What's the connection? The Parshas Tetzave. Fascinating, Shaila. Great. What's the connection to Parshas Tetzave? We said before, one of the sources was, and mevatlin tinoikes shil beis raman afilu lebinyan beis amidash. Even to, be, to build beis amidash. In this Parshas, we learn about beis amidash. And now we have to ask, we touched on it last week, just a drop. Now we're going to expand a little. Can Ketanim build a base Amigdash? Can they be involved? In some, in some ways, if it's not an expense of their learning. Yeah. So There's a day off. So yeah. The Rebbe is sick. So He's on strike they can lift, from before. Uh, they can lift bricks and whatever. Just lifting them up and down. Can Ketani be involved, under Bar Mitzvah be involved in building Beis Hamidash? Should they be involved? Are they chayev to be involved? Don't they have, don't they have a position? Don't we talk about this? What do you mean they have a position? They do something in the Beis Hamidash? What do they do? I don't know. Not a coin. We talked about a coin. What a void that he has. We, had, we said two things that they can do. Achil Kochim and guarding Beit Avtinas. But this is after Beis Hamidash is already up and running. Can they be involved? Should they be involved? Are they chayiv to be involved in Bina Besamitash? I mean, like the Polish, okay? The second Besamitash, non Jews were involved in the Besamitash. Ah, what a raya. What non Jews were involved? King Hiram. Shloyme Amelech said, King Hiram, send over your Avadim. We need help. If Goim can be involved, Kalva Choymer, Ben Blush to Kalva Choymer, that Jewish kids can be involved. Psh, what a raya. So let's take the strong ones. Or take, for the weak ones, take small bricks. Or just let them carry the, uh, you know, the hammer and the nails. That's a big machloikis. I think once we touched on it, will the third base of Midash come sure, from Shamaim? Or do you have to get up, take your hammer, your nails, and start working? Rambam in Hilchos Beis Sabchir HaPerek Aleph Olach Aleph says, Mitzvahs Ese Livnos Bais Lashem Muchan Liyos Makrivin Boya Korbanos. A quote. It's a positive commandment for the Torah to build a house to a Kodesh Baruch Hu to bring the Korbanos. Shneema Ve'asuli Migdash Ve'asuli Ve'shachanti Besoichan. However, many, many sources indicate that Beis Hamidesh will come down. Shh. I'm sure. A Kodesh Baruch Hu himself says in Baba Kama Daf Samech, Ani Hashem, Be'esh Hitzatiya, I lit the fire and I destroyed Beis Amidash, I will rebuild the Beis Amidash. Why is it Machlech is Khan, Christ, Mishon, 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 Mishon
Because the Kodesh Baruch Hu is speaking about the Bais Sheni that was destroyed, and the Kodesh Baruch Hu says, don't worry, I'm going to bring it to you. The Zohar HaKodesh says, Bais Rishon and Bais Sheni, since they were man-made, they weren't able to last. But Bais Shlishi, since it's going to be a Kodesh Baruch Hu is making it, Shenemar, Migdash Hashem, Koinenu Yadecha, a Kodesh Baruch Hu's hands as if will form the base of Migdash, that will last. Rashi and Toysis maintain in three places in Shas. The Rosh Hashanah Daf Lamed, Sukkah Mem Aleph Amud Aleph, and Shvu is Tesvav Amud Beis, Beis HaMikdash HaShlishi She'anu Metzapin Lo, the third Beis HaMikdash that we are yearning, anticipating it's coming. Asid Leired Banui Umeshuchlal Min HaShamayim, will come down from Shamayim. Shneemar, Mikdash HaShem, Koinenu Yadecha, many places in the Medesh, in the Zoya, other Rishonim as well, hold, it will come down Shemaim. But, Lichoira, there's a Mitzvot Eseh, as the Rambam say, and we have other sources in the Midrashim. In Medrash Rabbam, Bereish Yisrael, Bapash Tosamechei, it says some Omoraim actually wanted to go to Yerushalayim and build Beis Amidash. It didn't work for them. But we have a big Machlokes, who will build the third Beis Amidash. This Machlokes is still today. Till today. Nizke v'nichye v'nire, how it's the Mice is going to come. But... So according to the side that you have to get up and start working, can, should, a katan be involved? Is he chayev? Licho ere de befeir shayez what we were before. Ein mevat link tanim. Afilu lebinyan beis amidash. A katan is learning to you don't stop him. Why not? If everybody else has to run to Yerushalayim, whatever they're doing, you're learning to you have to stop. Beis amidash. Tanim, you don't stop. So on the way to Yerushalayim, you're learning. People in Chutz Laaretz who are not here will be learning. Don't worry. And you think tzaddikim, while they're building Beis Amidash, they can be they can be learning, saying a shir. No, no, this has to be here. This has to be it's Maseches Midos. It's also part of Torah. It's no problem. So Hilchos Beis Abchira, Perek Aleph, Pas Alocha Yud Beis, the Rambam says, and Boynin Es Amidash Balayla. Don't build Beis Amidash Balayla. Only during the day. Why? שנאמר, וביום הקים אס המשכן, ביום ולא בלילה. והוא הסכין בבניין. מהלוס השחר you start at dawn עד צייסה כוכבים. Who should be involved? והכל חייבים לבנות ולסעד בעצמם ובממוינם. Everybody has to contribute and help building base המקדש with their money, with their body. אנשים ונשים כמקדש המדבר. Men and women like Back in the desert. Ve'en mevat lin tinoike shel beis raban lebinya. But you don't stop the kids from learning toya for binya beis amigdash. So lichoira, that's only when there's school. School ends at 4 p.m. Let them run to beis amigdash. Until tzeis akochavim. If it's in the summer, they have five, six, seven hours to work. Or if the kids are, the, the, parents, the teachers are on strike or whatever it is, chofesh. He says, maybe you don't nullify them to go to Yerushalayim and start building with you, but to assist, to bring the bricks, maybe they do have shaykhus. Shulchan not only wrote on the four halakim of Shulchan, no, he also wrote like the Rambam, on Hilchesa Lemeshicha, Aruch HaShulchan, He Asid, future. And he writes in Hilchos Beis Hamidash in Kochim, Simon Gimel, something we never understood until he came along and explained it like that. The Gemara that we keep quoting, and mevaslin tinoikes shel boys rabban. You don't stop the kids from learning Torah. Afiru lebin and Beis Hamidash. It's not because of the kids. It's an instruction to the milamdim. Not because of the kids. Because what we want the milamdim to keep staying there, and we have other people other than the milamdim. We don't need the milamdim to also come to Yerushalayim. It's not an instruction for the kids. It's an instruction for the rebbes. Achidish. So Lichoira, that takes away that the whole proof that we have from the, from the Gemara and Shabbos Kufi don't stop them from learning, that just rejected the, the, the Shaya and we have to use something else. The Al Sheikh HaKadosh says, a great Chiddush, Betzalel was eight years old when he created, last week, this week, next three weeks, when he's creating the Mishkan. This goes against what Chazal say in Shas that he was 13 years old. But this is Al Sheikh HaKadosh, he brings Rayas. If that's the case, if he's eight years old, you see that Ktanim are Shaykh. 
But maybe this can be rejected as well because Toysis in Sanhedrin Daf Samich Tes says that in Doiros Rishonim, early generations, they used to bring Simanim of Gadlus much earlier. In other words, today, when a kid is 13, then we know he's a Gadol, he has Simanim. But back then, whoo, kids were born. At, uh, Haran has, uh, had kids when he was 8 years old. I think Asnat was 6 years old when she had uh, kids. She started having kids. So they had Simani Gadlus earlier than 13, and the Simani is what determined if you're a Gadol or not. So you, mean you can't bring a Raya from back in the time of Betzalel. Things have changed. The Tiferes Yisrael, you were mechavin to him. The Tiferes Yisrael says, wait a second, Shloimu HaMelech instructed Hiram, I want you to bring my, your Avadim, assist in being a Beis Amidash. So if you can use Goim, Kalvachomia, you can use Yidins. But maybe we can reject that. Why? The Rashash wonders about this Tiferes Yisrael. It says, it says in the uh, entrance to Beis Amidash, there's a big sign there, no entry for non-Jews. So how can you tell me they assisted in Binyan Beis Amidash? Yeah, he, says, he wants to say, maybe it's only a Hechsher Mitzvah. Hechsher Mitzvah you can do by a Goy. And if you can do a Hechsher Mitzvah by a Goy, you can certainly do a Hechsher Mitzvah by a Yid. Cut him. <coughs> there is a place that they can come, but they can't step one, you know, can't take one step forward. To that area they're allowed to be, just like women are allowed to be in a certain area, Yisrael are allowed to be in a certain area, Levim are allowed to be in a certain area, Kohanim are allowed to be in a certain area, and Kohen Gadol can be all the way in Kodesh HaKoshim. Everybody has his, has area where he's allowed to step. So if they can't go all the way in, how can you tell me they built? But it could be that they only assisted in schlepping, and they brought everything close to Yerushalayim maybe. Who says they went into the Beis Amidash area? So assisting, maybe a cotton can be involved as well. Fine. Does the base of the Gush have Kedusha uh, before the Kalim was born in? Does it possess, like, before the Aaron is there? The... So, so that, that's also another opinion. It could be that before you have the place built, anybody can step in. There's no, there's no base of Midrash here now. No Kedusha, there's no fence saying, oh, you can't step here. The Klechem that brings a Raya from the third base of Midrash. We said before. There are many opinions. Third base of Midrash is going to come down from Shemaim. Oh, what does that mean? That it doesn't have to be built by a person who's a Bar Chiyuva. So why do I care that an under 13 year old is still not a Bar Chiyuva? So what? If a Kodesh Bochu can bring it, and he as if is not a Bar Chiyuva, so even kids under 13 year old also can be involved and can build the base of Midrash. But again, it could be that it's only a Hechsher Mitzvah to build the base of Midrash. And therefore, Ketanim can do it. But the, the language that keeps coming back in the Psukim to form, to build the base of Midrash is Asiya. V'chen ta'asu, 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 ta'asu. How is it possible? It's going to come down from Shemaim if the word keeps saying as ta'asu. Maybe ta'asu, build, create, that only is for the Mishkan and not for Beis Amidash. And Beis Amidash will come down from Shemaim. And therefore, Kodesh Baruch Hu is not a Bar Chiyuva, so Ketanim can also do. Lemaise, how do we decide on this Machlokes? Big time Machlokes. What do we decide? We decide to apply what we said an hour ago, those who daven an hour ago, and two hours ago, those who daven nets. The end of Valetzion, what do we say? Venizke, venichye, venire. Let's say Hashem, bekao, 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 we will see. Eliyahu Anov is going to come, Moshe Rabbein is going to come, and they will tell us what Allah has. Meanwhile, nizke, venichye, venire. Is there any opinion that says that it's both meaning Hashem bring it down, and the finishing touches, you know, putting the last touches on, and the screws and whatever, is done by half to... There are ways to settle it. One of the ways is the Maril Diskin, what you're saying, the Gemor in Basra, the beginning, the Dalit, I think, says, Mem Dalit, that a house is not called a house until you put the uh, doors. Is that a house? Eicha perek beis pasuk tes, tavu ba'aretz she'areha. The gates of Beis Amidash were sunk down and were nignas in the ground. HaKadosh Baruch is going to bring us Beis Amidash. Still not called a bias. Until he's going to expose and show us where those gates are, we will take them out, and we will take the screwdriver and install the gates, and it's considered that we build it. Shoot film. So don't make like He brings the bite, we complete it, we made it. We do it together. That's one way. Some say, HaKadosh Baruch builds, we, we, we will have to build the physical structure. HaKadosh Baruch will infuse it 
with the spirituality from above. So again, no machloikis, it's just diff different things that each one is involved. The Diva Yatsif says it's no machloikis. It's different times, depends on what type of geula. In Sanhedrin Dav Tzadiches, we learn there's two types of geula. Ani Hashem, says the Navi in Yeshaya, Ani Hashem be'ita achishena. In its time, I will hasten it, decide. Is it in its proper time, or I will bring it fast? So it's the Gemara, depends. If we don't do tshuva chalila, so we'll come in its destined time. And when that happens, everything is b'derech ha'teva. You got to take a hammer and some nails, and you got to work. But if it's going to be above teva, achishena, because we do tshuva, so then everything is supernatural, and HaKadosh Baruch brings it back from Shemaim. No machlokis. It's different types of geulos. Geulas be'ita or geulas achishena, and the other answers as well. The man Shapira once came to a certain town, and he saw the shul was rov per vehadar, glamorous, amazing. He never saw a shul like this before. Then they took him to show him the cheder of the kids. It looked like a place is falling apart. Shh, mamish, garbage. The place was falling apart. He couldn't believe it. So he came Shabbos, and he asked if he can say a few words in the shul. He said, sure. The Rebbe is going to honor us. He got up. And he asked the question. He said, we're learning in these pastures about the kelim, all the vessels in Beis Hamidash, and they have to be made from gold. But Chazal say in Menachos Kafres, that if there is no gold, you can do from other metals, except for one vessel. What is this vessel, he asked the crown, that if you don't have gold, you still can make it from anything else? Anyone knows? And they all looked at him and says, no. 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 The Gemara Nechin says that when they didn't have it, initially they made it not from gold. They made it from wood. It, what is it that must stay gold? No. Kiyo? No. That's the guesses that they tried. They tried all kinds of kelim. And he said, no, no, no. At the end of Pashas, you saw the Pasu says, Lota sun iti Elohei chesef. Talking about the Vedas Rashi explains, what does this mean? This refers to the Kuvim. That if you decide to make him from, make him from Kesef, from silver and not from gold, it is considered like a Vodazara in front of me. That's what the Kosh Baruch says. The Kuvim are the only ones, the only vessel based on this that you can't change and you must keep them only from gold. Why? Because Rashi says in Parsha Tetzavi in our Parsha, Perikav Ches Pasuk Yud Ches, the Kuvim had an image of of babies, of children, of Tinok. And therefore their position is on the Aaron because that's the focal point of Yiddishkeit. It's so essential that we make sure that to the kids we give everything gold. We don't change and we don't take away anything from the kids because that is our future. You have to press on the Messiah. You don't do it by giving them a cheder that looks like who knows what. The shul, oh, for the adults that comes glamorous. But the focus should be on the kids. And therefore he told him, your whole prioritization here is wrong. The prioritization should be always the kids. Then you can also take care of the adults, but first come the kids. <laughs> Speak to those who are wise-hearted. Who is a wise-hearted? What's the definition of a chacham leiv? There's a pasuk in Koheles. The Ben Ishchai says, Lev chacham liyiminoi. The wise of the heart goes, the heart of the wise goes to the right. The left seal and the fool goes to the left. What does it mean? The heart of the Chacham goes to the right? Let's go to the right of the word Lev. What's to the right of the la of the letter Lamed? Chaf. What's to the right of the letter base? Aleph. Aleph and Chaf form the word Ach. What's to the left of Lev? To the left of Lamed? Is Mem. To the left of Beis? Gimel. That makes the word Gam. We have a rule. Achin and Rakin. Whenever you see the word Ach and Rak, that comes to minimize, to exclude, to be Memayet. Gam and Es always comes to increase, to include, to add. The Lev of the Chacham, who is the real Chacham, is the one who goes to the right. In other words, he minimizes himself. 
the lev of the fool goes to the lev because he always wants a gam. He wants to add and more and more fame and fortune, honor, respect, money, whatever it is. He wants to add to himself. That's a fool. Stay away from him. Who do you, how do you know who is the wise hearted? The guy who goes to the right, who goes to the word ach. Ach is always a mute. He's memayat himself. He is the one who is smart. Koban tamid. Twice a day? We all agree? When? Boboikim ben abayim, boikim in the afternoon. Let's read the pasuk. Vezeh asher ta'ase ala mizbeach, kvasim b'nei shana, shnaim layom. How many? Shnaim layom. Tamid. Et ha-keves ha-echa ta'ase boboikim. Vet ha-keves ha-sheini. Vezeh ben abayim. Again, how many koban tamid? We all agree? We need to have a pasuk in Yechezkel. Perek men vav pasuk yud gimel. Vecheves ben shnasoi tamim taase. How many kvasim? One. Oila layom la Hashem. When? Baboike baboike taase oto. Finished. How many kvasim? One. How many common tamim? One. You told me two. That's all that. Hmm? That's all that. Korban Tamid. What type of a Korban is it? Mm-hmm. The Torah in Parashat Tetzave says, in Pinchas as well, how many Korban Oila? How many Korban Tamid? Two. The Navi Yechezkel says it's going to be only one. Can it be? One of our principles that we live by is Zot HaTorah Lo Tehem Uchlefes. Story will not change. Radak. The Radak says, There's going to be a Chiddush in the future. The Korban Ha'erev Lo Zachar, the Pasuk doesn't mention the Korban Tamid of Ben Ha'arbaim. Nireh, Shelo Yaseh Le'asid, Ela Oyla Zaboyker. In the future, there's only going to be one Korban Tamid. It's a Rishon, it's a Radak. What do you do with this? I asked, Moye Verabi, Reb Nevensam, Rebbe, what do we do with this Radak? Radak. He writes me, Tzarech Yun. Why Tzarech Yun? Be'anu mispalilim be'musafim. Every time we say Musaf, what do we say? HaKadosh Baruch Hu, bring us base Aminah so we will be able to do what? Ushnei smidim ke'il chasam. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we want to bring back the two Korban Tamid. And you're telling me there's only going to be one? I asked Abraham Kanievsky, Rebbe, what do you say? He writes to me, in the Nachon, if this is true, as kacha ha amra. So this is what Torah said. It's not going to be a change of the din. The Torah says, now two, time of the Mishkan, time of the first two Batei Mikdash, in the future, there's only going to be one. So it is not going to be a chidush, who, oh, something has changed in the Torah. The same Torah has said this. The Abarbanel takes on the Adak, <laughs> harsh language, says the Abarbanel. וזהו באמת דעת נפסד. He quotes the, the Radak, and he says, What are you doing? What are you saying? The Radak, חס ושלום. ולא תהיה אם כן תוירס השם ומצווסי הנצחיוס וקיימוס לעד. If you're right, so then the Torah is not eternal. The mitzvahs are not permanent. ויפול העיקר, and this one of the principles of the faith, will fall, because it is that this Torah will never change. So he has a Chiddush, and he wants to say that on top of the two Korban Tamid that we learn in Pasha's Tetzaveh, there's going to be another Korban, and that's what the Navi Yechezkel is talking about. And that's again, Shemen Jishemen's Chiddush. Comes Rabbeinu Achido. I found all these after I asked, Moira Virabo Yisar, Ebrahim Kanievsky Zatzal, and Rebnev Mitzal Shlita. And the Choymas Anach, Achido, in Pinchas, Oizvav, writes, עוד יש לי גם גם, I'm not sure, he says, what's going on here? And he, can, and he says, in Pashos Pinchas, the Pasuk says, אוילס תמיד לדוי רוי סייכם, meaning, אוילס תמיד, how many אוילס is this? One. אוילס תמיד, see what you do. תמיד, that's forever, for a future. But, there were times that you can bring to, so the Torah itself told you, Hinted to you what the Pasuk in Yechezkel is revealing to you. Pilei ploi. V'chidor again in Midbar Kadeimos, Ma'arechet Taf, Oiz Gimel writes, 
because of this change in the future, that's why the Tana called Maseches Tamid, Maseches Tamid. How was it supposed to be called? Maseches Tminim! Why is it called Maseches Tamid? Because he's telling you in the future it's only going to be one. So he's already calling the name of the Maseches, Maseches Tamid, because he wants to fit with the Pasuk in Yechezkel that tells us how it's going to be played. It's my mission unbelievable. Sarechion. That was his answer. Sarechion. What do you say every time when you say? According to the Chido, it's not a problem. According to the Barbera, it's not a problem. And in addition to the two that we always have, we're going to have an extra one. So we say we want to bring Musaf, to meet him, kill Chasam. How many to meet him? Either two or three, I don't know, but there's no problem. Comes a Tif Eyes, Yoy Nasa. If you understand, I have sheets, and he has a tremendous Chidish. He says, Why do you bring Koban Tamid? What is it supposed to do for you? The Koban of the Boker of the morning is Mechaper for Hirhure Halev. Wrong, improper thoughts that one has. The Tamid Shil Bein Arbaim, the one that you bring in the evening, is Mechaper for, what, the, for the mistakes that a person made when he learned at night. In Eruvin Sameh the Gemara says, Why was the night created? Lo Ibra Sihara Ela Lagirsa, in order to be able to learn. So one learns at night. And he makes a mistake. You need kapara for that. You have koban tamid of ben arbaim. But in the future, the navi zechariah promises in perek yudalet pasuk zayin vehayale es erev yihiye or won't be darkness anymore. If that's the case, they're not going to need the tamid shel ben arbaim. They're only going to need the tamid of shacha. So in the future, like the navi yecheskel says, it's a technical thing. You don't need to bring kapara for the learning. You make the mistakes at night in darkness because there's not going to be any more darkness. It's only going to be one long day. Mimele, you're not going to need the korban shbein arbaim, and therefore it's only going to be one korban. The mekor chaim takes us to the Allah and He says it's a tremendous chiddush. He brings that since in the Navi Yecheskel, it's proven that there will only be one korban. That's why most people don't say korbanos, korban atamid, before mincha, like people do say before shachris. Because shachris, <laughs> it's always going to be. Mincha in the future is not going to be. So we're doing a khan already. So there's no Indian to say it. And therefore, it's not nispashati, right? It's not spread, wisely spread that people say korban tamid before mincha. Tremendous wow. Since we spoke about tamid, korban tamid, 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 who is a masmid? Who is a real masmid? Somebody who learns with a lot of vigor, a lot of excitement, enthusiasm. Is he a masmid? No. Because when he doesn't feel like it, he doesn't learn. That's not a masmid. The pasuk here says, Shnaim layoem oila. That's defined as tamid. Which means the key to be a masmid is the tamid, is the consistency. A person who is consistent. And even if all he has is 15 minutes when he comes back home after a long day at work, or an hour, or three hours, whatever it is that he has, but he's consistent, he is called a masmid. Who is called a lamdan? Says the Chafetz Chaim. If somebody intends to steal, he wants to be a gazlan. But let me say he didn't. Is he called a gazlan? No. If somebody has all the abilities and skills in the world, a sharp mind, but he doesn't learn, he is also not called a lamdan. If he learns five minutes and he only utilizes the abilities that Akash Baruch Hu gave him, for five minutes, he's not called a lambda. It's the consistency. It's the using the tools that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave that will enable one to carry this unbelievable title called a lambda and called a masmid. The Nitziv said, somebody doesn't confuse us between the different times. There's time to eat and there's time to sleep and there's a time to learn. And one who does that consistently, he is a masmid. So we should be from those masmidim and those lamdanim who know not to confuse between the different times and to be consistent and even learn when we don't really feel like it because we have the time to do it. That's what we have to learn. Korban tamid, korbanos bichlal, correspond to tefillah. Now that we don't have korbanos, the pasuk says, Nadanvi says, Unishalma farim svaseinu. We will bring instead of bulls, instead of korbanos, we will bring our lip service, davening. So a few things about davening. Some suggest that when one finishes Shmona he actually is supposed to say Mazel Tov to the guy standing right next to him. Either Mazel Tov or Shalom Aleichem. 
וואי. בעיקר, בעוונותינו הרבים, שמונה עשר זה לא רגע, שמונה עשר זה לא רגע, And in our mind, you're, you're already marrying off your kids, you went to Acapulco for your vacation, you're going here, you're going there. So either you have to say Mazel Tov to the guy, or Shalom Aleichem. Lemaise, why don't we say Shalom Aleichem? We all do this, right? Unfortunately. We all, in our mind, we go different places. Why don't we say Shalom Aleichem to the guy right next to us? You know where he just went, right? So why don't you say Shalom Aleichem? But you did the same. It's not a problem. Because the Allah says, that when one comes from far, the one who is here is supposed to greet him with Shalom Aleichem. And he responds, Aleichem Shalom. The problem is, I don't know who went further in our thoughts, you know. <laughs> he went to Spain and I went all to South Africa. You don't know. So Lemaise, you're stuck with not saying Shalom Aleichem or Mazel Tov. When do we Lemaise have Kavana and Tefillah? Very difficult, very difficult. But when do we Lemaise have? Some people report that the only time they have Kavana is in Shir Shel Yom. Wait a second, what, what day is today? We have to really stop and think. Wait a second, today is Monday or Tuesday. Ah, Shir Shel Yom. Autopilot, you know, there's a guy, his name was Moshe Berkowitz, passed away not too long ago. He's 95 years old. And he went upstairs, and the Kodesh Baruch puts him in, in court. The Kodesh Baruch looks at him. He says, Moshe! Look, hmm? look, 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 look. He says, Kodesh Boch, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear what you said. Moshe! I'm so sorry, Kodesh Boch, but I don't understand what Kodesh Boch was saying. Kodesh Boch, I don't know what the, I don't know what the Kodesh Boch was saying. Kodesh Boch, I don't know what the Kodesh Boch was saying. I feel terrible, I don't understand what Kodesh Boch was saying. The Kodesh Boch says, and do you think I understood what you said when you dive into me three times a day for 95 years in this manner? What does that mean? An atom bomb. Some say that in our times today, we're actually in better shape than time of Beis Amikdash. Because of the Pasuk we just said. Uneshalma farim sfaseinu. There are all kinds of korbanos. You can bring a bull. You can bring a sheep. You can bring a goat. Which is the most expensive? A bull? A par? You can bring a mincha? So why does the Navi say, Uneshalma farim sfaseinu? He could have said, Uneshalma kvasim, Uneshalma izim. Instead of the goats, instead of the sheep that we can bring as kobanos, no, we will use our lips, davening. The Navi says no. In the time of Beis Amidash, if you don't have too much money, you can't bring a pile, you can't bring a bull. So you're forced to downgrade and to bring a goat, a sheep, an ani brings a mincha. But today we're all rich. If you do it right and you have kavan and tefillah, you can actually bring a bull every single time you dive in. So again, it's not optimal, it's not ideal. We strive to have, we yearn, we dive in every single day, we hope. That Kodesh Baruch Hu will bring us back, Mashiach, along with Beis Amidash. But as long as the Beis Amidash is not here, every tefillah can be like a tefillah of a par, of a bull on the highest level. That's why the Navi says, he propels us to action, he says, Uneshalma, Farin Fazenu, don't use your lip service as a bull, as a sheep, as a goat. It's a waste. Because today you can go with the highest kabbalah, like the highest level korban, and it would be a shame not to do it. <coughs> Yom Kippur. Everything is going to be sealed, finished, last 25 hours. If it was up to us, what should we recommend to people to do? What should they be involved in? You want to get as many schusim as possible. Isn't it a shame to spend 25 hours standing in shul and davening? It's a shame. What's davening? The Rabbana. Isn't it better to invest in Talmud Torah, which is the Raisa? Machloikis, which davening is the Rabbana, the Raisa, maybe one a day is... The Raisa, but everybody agrees to spend the whole day to have a shachris and a mincha. For sure, it's a lot of the rabbanas there. Why waste the time? Davani, nothing like it. Hundred thousand dollars, but Talmud Torah is a billion dollars. So why didn't they instruct us spend the next twenty-five hours? Don't take your head off the learning. Don't close your eyes for a second. The Raisa, the Raisa, the Raisa. The Talmud Torah cannot get cool on the reward corresponding Talmud Torah has, has the weight corresponding to everything, all the misses in the Torah. But you see, it's not like that. Since when push comes to shove and everything is going to be decreed and finalized and sealed, they tell us, no, no, 
spend the next 25 hours davening, you see the maila of davening. So some people say, listen, I have daven, but I have to run to the shear. I have to, so the feel out from this Berkowitz from before. You see from here that if on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, they tell us to spend the most time that we do davening. Mela, you see the maila of davening, the chashibus of it. Why did Moshe Rabbeinu enter Eretz Yisrael? Anyone? Because of the water. What do you do with the water? Hit the rock. Instead of? Rabbi Yochanan doesn't think like you. Rabbi Yochanan doesn't think like you. That's what we all we were taught to believe, right? What about Ish Mitzri? Rabbi Yochanan doesn't think like you. Medrash Rabbi at the end of Vezois Abu Acham. Omar Rabbi Yochanan. Ten times the word death is associated with Moshe Rabbeinu in the Torah. Hine anoichi mes. Umus bahal. Hine atames. Ten different times the word me, misa, death, appears connected to Moshe Rabbeinu. Melamed, says Rabbi Yochanan. Shalom nigzar gzar dino. Up to the tenth time. Why? Because Moshe didn't jump and start davening as soon as he heard the first time the word death. So why didn't Moshe Rabbeinu come and tell his soul to the Biochan? Because he didn't daven. If he would have, the decree wouldn't be sealed. Only after ten times I'm mentioning this word. Ten times. You don't chap. What was the calculation that Moshe Rabbeinu made? Moshe Rabbeinu says, look, whenever, whenever Klal Yisrael sinned, I always wear Muhammad Shut. I daven for them and a the Kodesh Baruch who forgave him. Me, that I never daven, never sinned from my youth. When I'll get to it and I'll daven, of course the Kodesh Baruch is gonna forgive me. Kodesh Baruch didn't like it. And therefore a Kodesh Baruch who jumped, that's the language of the Medish, and made a shvua. You are not coming into the soil. Melamed Shehaya Hadavar Kalbainav. Light in his eyes. It's the language of Yochanan. Medish Shabbat. Since HaKadosh Baruch Hu saw, Ve'eino oimed betfila, you're not davening? Minad, kafa tzala ve'nishba bishmo ha'godol, shelo yikones le'eretz Yisrael. So, the sin of Meim Yeriva was the decree, but why was it executed? Because he didn't daven. I'm just unbelievable. But he did! How many times did he daven? 515 times the gimati of the word Vayes Hanan. 515 times! And the Kodesh Baruch Hu says, Rav Lach! Al Toysef Dabi No, no, no more. And Chazal say, if he would add one more tefillah, he would enter. So the Kodesh Baruch Hu had to stop them. So now we understand. Why did Moshe Rabbeinu not come into the soul? He didn't have him. Wait a second, wait a second. Ask the Tzachemis. So why didn't Klani Shul have for him? Moshe cannot have because Kodesh Baruch Hu said, stop. But he didn't tell you not to stop. He didn't tell you to stop. So why didn't you have him? Because Klani Shul made their own calculation. Say, wait a second. Moshe Rabbeinu? They don't answer him after 515 times so they're going to listen to me. Who am I? Moshe Berkowitz from the, pre from the previous story. You think they're going to listen to me if they don't listen to Moshe Rabbeinu? Ah! And therefore they didn't have it. But they made a terrible mistake because the Gemorin Brochus Davches says, Le'oilam! And HaKadosh Baruch Hu Moyes Betfila Tzibu Never does HaKadosh Baruch Hu reject the Tfila of Tzibu. So they might say, why didn't Moshe Rabbeinu come into Eretz Yisrael? Because we, Klal Yisrael, didn't have for him. He couldn't. He had to stop. Because the Shabbat said stop. But if we would have added one more tefillah, Moshe Rabbeinu would come into Eretz Yisrael. There's a kid who told me that his father has a direct number of a Kodesh Bochum. I said, what do you mean? No, no, he has a direct number, I know. He says, how do you know? He says, whenever we go to shul, my father takes out his cell phone and dials a number and he's on the phone the whole time. So of course my father has a direct number. Ay, 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 We end with Masech Eskala Rabasi. Masech Tottanosh Beshas. Perek Vav Aloch Agimel. Listen to a language. Bish'at Pirato Shel Rabbi Eliezer. Rabbi Eliezer, Tana. He is dying. The Talmidim come in. And they said, Rebbe, teach us one thing. Give us something before you leave. And Rabbi Eliezer says the following. Banai. Ma Allah Medesrem. What can I teach you? Tse'u. Be extremely careful with honoring your friends. 
And when you standing and davening to Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Hevu Yoidim Lifnei Mi Atem Oindim Umispalim. No, before whom you are davening, she bishvil davar ze for this alone. Tikansu kulchem lechaye haOlam habo. Mitzvah Hashem may it be that our share is with them. Achenu kol beis Yisrael nesuni b'tzara uva shivya. Amakom yerachem alem v'yotzi mitzara levacha fele leor mishibud legeula. Ashta ba'agana uvizman kori ve'noi mar o'mein.